Tofu, are you back? Are you back? Welcome to episode 14 of Stitching the High Notes, a video podcast about knitting, sewing, and all things crafty. My name is Joanna, and you can find me all over the internet as Opera Joe, most notably on Ravelry, Instagram, and Periscope. Hello! I have missed you all. It has been three weeks since my last confession. <laughs> uh, this is usually a bi-weekly video cast or video podcast. Um, so it's been an extra week and I am feeling it. Um, and some of you have written to me and said that you are feeling it as well, which is very kind, but I feel you. I miss you. It's weird to say I miss you because I'm just talking into my camera, but I do miss you. So I have much to share with you all, uh, but first a few announcements and updates. A huge welcome first and foremost to all returning viewers and to all new viewers. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch my little podcast, which is one of many um, out there, um, many of which I also watch as well. and. Uh, taking this time to sit and visit, um, which I also like to do with other podcasters. So thank you so much. And I want to give a shout out to all of the new members of the Ravelry group. There is a group for the podcast in Ravelry. You can find it by searching Stitching the High Notes. I encourage you to join. Um, if you would like to get a shout out or just want to introduce yourself as well, there's an introductions thread and there are a lot of little ways to chit chat with people and share projects, which I'll be talking about throughout the episode. So roll the epic Star Wars roll. Welcome to Joanne, who is Scooby Ruby Doo, Esther, who is M. Rubin, Karen, who is Karen SWB, George Ann, who is Stitching Plaza, hello George Ann, Dawn, who is Knit Till Dawn, Rose Lynn Knits, Carice, who is Carisma Knits, Shauna, who is Simple Knitter Mom, Fanny, who is Fanny PZA, Fanny Pizza, Fanny PZA. Barbara, who is Knitting I Love, and some of you might know who Barbara is. You should check out her podcast. It's amazing. Um, and her shop. And Mandy, who is Pale is the New Tan. I like your name, Mandy. And last but not least, Billy Stamps. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, welcome. So, announcements and updates. Uh, where to begin? Let me look at my show notes because it's not going to hopefully be a long podcast, but I'm trying to cram a lot in here. First of all, let's acknowledge that we're in a different space. <laughs> Forgot to do that. So, I am currently up at my mom's house for a long weekend. It is Friday, October 28th. I'm taking the day off because... Sometimes you just need to take the day off. And I decided to come on up for a long weekend and I'm gonna see my new nephew and hang out with family and do a bunch of crafty things to feed my creative spirit. So I am in my mom's glorious craft room. You might, if you've seen previous episodes, um, I have, I forget which number, I'll pop it down here. Um, but I uh, came up, during the summer to help move mom's craft room from the upstairs to the downstairs. And um, we are now in the downstairs. 
And um, so I will plop in a little video that I took before podcasting to give you a tour. All right, it's podcast time. A little pre-podcasting view. This is my mother's glorious craft room, which you probably have seen in an earlier episode when we moved her craft room from upstairs to the downstairs. This is her amazing pegboard, which she painted with quilt blocks. And her serger, her yarn stash, her ever-growing yarn stash, her bobbins. This is her original sewing machine, which is amazing. It's a tank. And then we have one of her design boards, some crafty amazingness, some stamps. Here's her dress form, which is the same as my dress form. And I made her this shawl. This is a pebble beach in lace weight by Miss Babs. And I will put up the colorway here and the yarn base. But it's lovely and very flowy. It's got a beautiful drape to it, which you can kind of kind of sort of see. And this is her more recent acquisition of a sewing machine, a couple years old now. It's her little courtyard. And this is her, she's got like paper and all kinds of crafty things in here. And this is her fat quarter stash, only some of it, <laughs> which is beautifully sorted in color sequence, if you will. And here's another design board. She's working on this quilt here. She's just so inspiring. Oh yeah, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I hope you enjoyed that. So I'm all out of whack because apparently one week throws you off kilt, but I forgot to do what needs to be done at the beginning of every podcast, which is tea time. Tea time. So today I'm drinking out of this amazingness. This is a mug from Natalie of Remembrance Pottery on Etsy. She is uber talented. Check this out. It's glorious. So I saw this pop up on Etsy and I just could not resist. I put in my order as soon as I could. And Natalie kindly, there's my lipstick. Sorry, Natalie. <laughs> so in, I, Natalie also sent some stuff, which I'll be showing later in the episode as well. Um, but I am loving this cup. It's my first initiation of drinking out of it. I am drinking today some cold tea. Don't ask me why, because it's raining and dreary here, which makes you want hot tea. But I just wanted some cold tea. And mom had some of my favorite, which was in the fridge, and that's tea java. There's thread on the bottom. You know you're in a craft room when there's thread on your tea. So anyway, tea time, grab your beverage of choice, and let's properly get started now. Giveaways. So the 1500 subscriber giveaway was about a month ago and the wonderful winner of that giveaway did indeed contact me. So congratulations again, Kitty. I will be popping that amazing Mrs. Brown's bag in the mail to you as soon as possible. And then we have a new giveaway. And if you follow me on Instagram, that's where I announced it because it was also a um, thank you to all of the wonderful followers on Instagram. I went above 1,000, which is crazy. And during the last three weeks, we hit above 2,000 subscribers on the podcast. Which is amazing. <laughs> so thank you guys so much. 
I could gush forever, but I won't. But thank you so much for watching and for subscribing. So as a huge thank you, and since Rhinebeck was a couple of weeks ago and I'm working on a sweater from Yuzolda Teague's amazing book, The Rhinebeck Sweater, I put a prompt on Instagram um, to give away a digital copy of The Rhinebeck Sweater to a lucky winner. And the prompt was that you had to like the post to make sure you followed me on Instagram and then um, tag some of one to three of your friends um, in a comment in the thread of that post. So I went ahead and did a random number generator. I eliminated folks that didn't tag anybody and all that jazz. And I have a winner for you. So the winner is... Dana, who is Dana Ray 19 on Instagram. Congratulations! So Dana, go ahead and contact me on Instagram through direct message and um, confirm what your ravel what your Ravelry name is. I'll try to look it up um, to confirm as well on Ravelry. And I will send you that digital copy of the Rhinebeck book as soon as possible. I'll probably announce the winner on Instagram after I film this episode as well. So thank you all so much for participating. Don't worry if you weren't on Instagram and you missed out. There are many more giveaways on the horizon. I just wanted to do something special for all my Instagram peeps. So, the pumpkin cow. The pumpkin cow is in full swing, y'all. And we are about to enter our last month of the cow. It is taking place, it started September 1st and it ends November 24th. It is to knit, um, to crochet, to spin, and then knit um, anything that is pumpkin related. The yarn could be pumpkin um, related. The project is pumpkin related. Just describe how it is pumpkin inspired in your FO, so uh, in your FO post. So I am co-hosting this amazing cow with Gabby. Hi, Gabby. Gabby is the wonderful host and yarn dyer of Upon a Corgi and Once Upon a Corgi podcast. And she and I are coasting because we're both pumpkin obsessed and many of you are as well. And we wanted a way to, to like exude our joy about pumpkins. <laughs> So weird, but true. So we um, started this cow back in September and it's a long one. It's about three months almost because mainly for selfish reasons, I'm working on a cardigan that I knew was gonna take me until November 24th <laughs> to finish, um, which I'll be showing um, in whips in just a little bit. Um, so we have many, many prizes for this cow, which I'll, I will detail in the next episode, which won't be in three weeks, knock on wood. I might, it might even be the following week, we'll see. But, um, and I'll go through all of the wonderful prizes, but there are some new ones that I wanna tell you about. So before I show you the new prizes, I want to make sure you guys um, check out the Ravelry group. There's a chatter thread and an FO thread, and in the chatter thread, all of the rules and details about the Cal are there, should you have any questions. So the first new prize um, Gabby showed on her most recent episode, and it is from Michael, who is of Ap Apateno Knits, Apateno Knits. Apteno Knits. Sorry, Michael. <laughs> and he has an Etsy shop of the same name. He is also the host of the Penguin Coffee Clutch podcast. And he donated, pictured here, a skein of wood warbler in his Stellina base. And Gabby shows it in person on her podcast, so I encourage you to go check it out. It looks squishalicious and gorgeous. The next new prize is from Wonderful Marianne of Sinister Yarns. And she contacted me and said that she wanted to donate um, some prizes. And so she donated this gorgeousness. Check it out. I'm trying to cover my face so it focuses. Here's her label. 
And this is Sinister Sock. It is in the Witch's Rave colorway. And it is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon, 100 grams, 463 yards. And to go along with it, she sent this adorable stitch marker, which is a robot. And it's so awesome. Thank you so much, Marianne. So those are the new prizes for the pumpkin cow. Check out the threads in Ravelry. Um, knit up those pumpkin related items. There are so many glorious projects going on and that have just recently been finished. You guys are amazing and so inspiring. This is so much fun. I love pumpkins. Okay, moving on. <laughs> so delicious. So I do sew every once in a while. I like to talk about it a lot more than do it, apparently. <laughs> but I am actively sewing something right now, but it is a surprise. Um, I've mentioned in, I think, just the most recent episode, episode 13, that I am um, doing a swap for Advent Calendar Swap that the lovely Melissa of the Spicy Homemaker podcast, hi Melissa, is hosting. And my swap partner is the amazing, awesome granny. I'm so honored and excited. And so I'm busily preparing, um, doing the final touches and um, doing some of the bulk stuff. That's partly why I came up to mom's casa because Hello, she has like every tool you could ever imagine, so why not? Um, so I'm making something for that and sewing, and so yeah, so I'm super excited about that. And sewing plans, I don't have too much on the horizon in the new year. I want to do a lot. I want to do some garment sewing again. Um, I am just always busy at this time of year because it's holiday season, which means I'm a fundraiser, so it's end of year giving time, and it's also holiday music time. So there's a lot of music to be sung. So it's a little busy. <laughs> Finished objects. I have a ho, a half object. <laughs> I forgot my sock blocker, so I hope you forgive me. This is Nomadic Yarns in the Halloween colorway. I did toe up with the fish lips kiss heel. Bloop, bloop, bloop. It fits wonderfully. I've cast on the second one, which I guess I could show you right now. Here is the yarn. Gorgeous. And here is the second little sucky poo. I'm getting all tangled here. And this is a new stitch marker from Sucra Sucra Miniatures. And it came in an October tiny box of joy. I'm totally blanking on the name. I'll plop it down here. But um, it is adorable. Look at the back of it. It looks like a cookie. I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you do it, Chelsea. Amazing. So yeah, so I've cast on the second sock. I'd like to get these done for Halloween. We'll see if they happen. But I have a hoe. I have a half object, so that's awesome. And I'm putting, I've been knitting these out of my Spookalicious Villainess bag from Upon a Corgi, Once Upon a Corgi by Gabby. And then I should, before I show you the last finished objects, I should acknowledge what I am wearing right now. <laughs> so Halloween is only a few days away. I'm very excited. And because I've had a busy schedule, I didn't have time to sew anything. I didn't have any big parties to look forward to. There were many that I was invited to, but it just didn't work out schedule wise. So I thought I, I happened upon this t-shirt on Amazon and on Etsy. And some of you who have watched the podcast and who know me know my love of Game of Thrones and all things nerdy. And I couldn't resist. 
A girl has no costume. <laughs> I love ironic costumes. It's my favorite. One year I went as um, pregnant, pregnant Britney Spears. <laughs> the first time that she got pregnant just because, yeah. And um, I can't remember... One year in New York, when I first moved there, I went as um, I went as a hipster because that was when I like learned about hipsters and hipsters became this thing, and I I thought it was hilarious, but I ended up just blending into the crowd, so it was really funny. <laughs> anyway, on to the next finished object. So I have been showing these a million bajillion times all over Instagram, but I'm going to show them here. So I am making pumpkin hats. <laughs> They're so cute. So this one is obviously for my nephew. I'm not going to lie. I'm probably not going to block it. I probably should. But it's super cute. So the pattern is, let me look this up here. It is Pumpkin Head by Tara Thompson. The yarn is Cascade 220 in the pumpkin colorway. And it the top here is Knitted Wit yarn. And it's a DK yarn. And it is the double bubble in the Mighty Oak colorway. And I used size six needles. For this guy, I used DPNs. I know, me using DPNs. It's happening more and more. Just have to face the facts. And then for the adult size hat, cause y'all know there was gonna be one, I used um, 16 inch circular. And then I went to the DPNs for the top to reduce it. So the leaf, I think, is by the same person. Um, it's a free pattern, the pumpkin hat pattern and the leaf pattern. It's super easy. And then I just sewed it down, like tacked it down here. So I'm going to ruin my hair and I'm going to show it to you. Ta-da! <laughs> it's super cute. I love it. I'm probably going to make one for myself at some point. So this one I'm making, this is for the nephew and I'm making one for my brother-in-law and for my sister. And so they'll be wearing it for Halloween in a couple of days. And I'll show you the where I'm at with the third and last one um, in whips here in a second. My hair, it's like very Berkeley today. Whips works in progress. So we'll keep with the pumpkin head theme here and I'll show you where I'm at with the third pumpkin hat. So I cast this on a couple of days ago and I've been working on it at night and in meetings as well. Um, and this is where I'm at with the third one. So I think tonight I'm going to be editing. So once I finish editing, um, I can probably work on this guy and try to get it done. I'm using my little sti pumpkin stitch marker from Slip Stitch Studios. And yeah, I like this yarn a lot. It's really cool. It's very springy. Um, like I said, it's Cascade 220 in the pumpkin colorway. Shocker. And here is the... Um, here's the ball of the knitted wit yarn but here it is all in the hank the mini hank i was so happy to find this i got this at my local yarn shop avenue yarns and i was so happy to find this because i didn't want a big skein i mean you could always use yarn i mean right but um i'm glad i found these little guys here because it was just perfect for what i needed so that's whip number one Whip number two, which you saw was the second sock uh, for my Halloween socks with nomadic yarns. And whip number three is I did a bunch of work on the architecture scarf for my friend Radislava. I gave this as a gift to her last November. 
and I'm trying to see how far I can get before her birthday, which is coming up. So I have this in my create bag from Little Skein in the Big Wool. Love, love Annie's bags. Love her bags. And um, so I'll pop up a picture here of what the pattern looks like. And I got pretty far on it. Um, let me see if I can. Here's, here's a skein of the yarn I'm using that isn't attached to my project, so don't freak out. <laughs> But this is Miss Babs in the Caroline base in the pewter colorway. And it's gorgeous and lofty and oh, let me see if I have a tag in here and I can tell you the breakdown of it. I do. So it is 70% superwash merino wool, 20% cashmere and 10% nylon. So it's great, it's fantastic. And it is fingering weight yarn. I don't, can't tell what ply it is. I wanna say it's, it looks like two, but it's awesome. So here is where I've gotten on this. I love this project. It is so wonderful to knit on. It's very potato chippy. Um, I probably plopped it up who it's by here a minute ago, but it's by Jennifer Weissman. I'm using size nine, size nine, size five needles. I'm using my carbons. And where the progress keeper is, that's where it was last time I showed you, which was a few episodes ago. I'm using a stitch marker from a homespun house. It's a little teacup. It's so sweet and perfect for this particular project. Um, because I often go over for proper tea with Radislava at her casa. So yeah, so I'm, I'm doing pretty good. I told her, I think I was smoking crack because she was like, how far are you? <laughs> Uh, when I saw her a couple of weeks ago and I said, Oh, I'm halfway there and I'm, eh, I'm almost halfway there. It's going to be rather, I'm making, I think the medium size cause she's a petite gal. So, so yeah, so I'm really excited about this. It's fun, but yeah, I'm ready to, I, I love knitting on it, but I'm ready to gift it cause there's so many other things that I want to cast on as well. And I know she's eager to have it though. Weather has finally turned here. We're kind of, knock on wood, done with Indian summer. Um, and so it's like proper autumn now. And especially in the city, it's back to being foggy and cool. And so yeah. So that's whip number three. The last whip that I will show you is the big kahuna. It is my Pumpkin Ale Cardi by Isolde Teague from the Rhinebeck Sweater Book. I have it stored in my spooktacular bag that I made last year. I think it was maybe my first project bag or second. Um, I love this fabric. It's kind of wrinkly because of the interfacing I used. but yeah. And it's got awesome lining. And I'm not as far as I wanted to be on this, but I'm still pretty stinking proud of myself for how far I've gotten at this point. It's much further than I thought I was gonna get. So the yarn I'm using is Miss Babs in the Roasted Pumpkin colorway. Gorgeous. It's worsted and 100% merino wool, I believe. And without further ado, I, if there's a drum roll effect here, I will enter it as I try to figure out how to show you. And here we are. Kaboo. <laughs> so I finished the left right panel, I think is what you call it. So first I'll show you, if you haven't seen already, this is the 
gorgeous back panel. And then this is the left panel. And where I showed you last is where the cute little pumpkin pie stitch marker is. And I'm gonna do this way to kind of show you what's up here. It's on waist yarn now. So I did the pocket. I'm a little concerned. So I couldn't find a bigger crochet hook to do the provisional cast on um, for some scrap yarn. And then you use that. I'm not really giving away too much secret sauce here, but, um, and then you cast on for the pocket part of the pocket here. And so it's really small and I'm worried it's going to be a much to, <laughs> to do, to undo when I finish the pocket later on. Um, but it went really well. And this is, I increased successfully for the arm hole and did the cable cast on. There's a little bit, you can see where I kind of shifted gears here. There's like a little bit of a like thing there, but I think that'll be okay. If it really bugs me, I can always sew it up, but it's not a huge deal. And so there's kind of the panel, it's rolling up on itself. So there you go. And so in the pattern, eventually I will, I'm kind of red, um, eventually I will pick up the stitches along here and then there'll be more of a, um, what do we call that? Band right here, collar band on the side. So I'll plop up pictures here so you can see a picture from the book of the finished project so you can kind of catch your bearings. But I am loving this. I adore it. I really do think once I get through this week of making other projects that I will definitely be able to focus on this and finish it for oh, hold, holding it upside down. <laughs> finish it for Thanksgiving, which is my goal is to wear it for Thanksgiving, if not sooner. But I adore it. <laughs> Yay! Okay. In the queue. So this will be an in the queue that will lead into acquisitions and in the postie. It's all together. What was it one time, you know when you're a little kid and um, some kids, at least I did, at some points wanted their food all in separate areas of their plate and they didn't want it to mix together. It couldn't like get cooties from the, the peas couldn't give the meat the cooties. And, um, there's a saying that, you know, just mix it. It's all going to the same place. So just like mix it up. So that's how in the queue and acquisitions and then the postie is today. It's all going in the same place. So the place of joy in our hearts. <laughs> So in the queue is that I talked about this briefly before and I'm trying to do it. We're at a very precious time in our country in the USA. I think you all know what I'm talking about. And um, I have my views, but I, especially on here, stay neutral. I also have friends who have all like the range of viewpoints and beliefs like is like the rainbow <laughs> so I um I do not want to even go there but I have to kind of go there to tell you about this project so my sister and brother-in-law are huge democrats they're huge democrats if I had friends who were huge republicans maybe I would do this project for them as well <laughs> talking to you Donna <laughs> but I um I'm making for my nephew this lovely little sweater that I had seen on Ravelry. And it is the Littlest Democrat Donkey, which is a chart that was created by Franklin Habit. And it's a free pattern or chart that you can get from her website. I believe it's a lady. Might be a dude. I don't want to assume. Um, so I... Picked up the yarn just this morning when I went to Joann's, which I posted about on Instagram, and it was glorious. As promised, a peek inside Joann's. Oh. 
it's magical. And I picked up this yarn for the sweater and I'm gonna be making the flax sweater by Tin Can Knits, which is a free pattern. And I got this because it's acrylic, but kind of cottony and really soft for the baby and it's machine washable. And then I will be using sugar and cream in the blue and the red for the donkey bit because that's what they had in stock and yeah. So I looked for kind of white baby yarn that had a similar ply and twist and so it's pretty close you can kind of see. So I'm going to be casting that on this weekend and trying to do my darndest to finish as much of it as possible before the big the big day, the big E day. So, um, yeah, there's, there's just a lot. Let's just move on, shall we? Peace and love. <laughs> okay. Additional acquisitions and in the posty. So a huge thank you to lovely Jerry, who is M Town Knit Guy on Ravelry and he surprised me and sent me a Glen Allen shawl by D. O'Keefe. So thank you so much, Jerry. That was so very kind of you. Um, an acquisition. So I last week intended to go to this gluten-free bakery. This was pre- Whole 30, and this is why I wanted to go to this bakery. I attempted to go to this bakery called Mariposa, which is um, all gluten free. It's celiac friendly. I'm not celiac, but it's celiac friendly. And I wanted to get like all of the pumpkin baked goods in before I started the Whole 30, and which I'll be talking about later on. If you guys are like, what is the Whole 30? What are you talking about? Don't worry, I'll talk about it. But, um, Sadly, when I got to Mariposa Bakery, their server was down and they were only accepting cash. But the bright side was that I realized I was not too far away from a verb for keeping warm. And if you're not familiar with this magical place, this is a yarn shop in Oakland, California. It is well known throughout the world now for natural dyeing, and this is their brick and mortar store. And they have their own yarn, they sell all of the hot brands, and they have classes and spinning classes and dyeing classes and so much amazingness there. And I've been a handful of times, I mean, I've only been knitting hardcore for about a year and a half now. So um, there's a lot that I still want to do, especially around this area. It's a big place for natural dyeing and for um, uh, spinning and for local wool and all that stuff. So I went to a verb for keeping warm because I have another thing that's in the queue, which Lindsay, I think you know about this. If you are watching, I want to be surprised, skip forward, if not get ready because I'm about to spoil everything. <laughs> so my friend Lindsay just had a baby girl. So cute. And so I asked a while ago, I was like, are you for or against bonnets? Because I want to make a bonnet. So this, I'm going to be making a bonnet that is the Violet Bonnet by Melissa Labar, which was Labar, which was in the making issue, number one, making magazine. By the way, I can't wait for number two to hit my local yarn shop. I'm like so ready to get that issue. So I um, wanted to knit with Quince, Quince & Co, which is what is used in the magazine. And I went into Verb for Keeping Warm and I went to, did a beeline for the Quince & Co. And I picked up this little wee skein here. And so this is in their turn base, which is, um, does it say? It's 
oh yeah, 75% American wool and 25% silk. Fancy baby bonnet time. So this is um, in the Wheeler Bay colorway. I just thought it would look beautiful on the wee baby and bring out her eyes. So I'm gonna be making a bonnet for this, for the little gal. And I think the size of it is probably for, it says for a kid. So um, she probably couldn't wear it yet, but it would be a keepsake. So I'm really excited to cast this on. And I'm loving this yarn. It's kind of got a good twist to it. It's very lofty and springy. Um, yeah, so I will let you know as I, as I work on it, it'll probably be, um, I don't know when I'm going to cast this on because I'm so focused on, I'm looking at my pumpkin ale, like, just like I have to finish that and the architecture shawl. So get ready, Lindsay. It's on its way. The other thing that I picked up out of Verb for Keeping Warm was something that I've had my eye on for some time and I thought about getting it and just couldn't do it yet and I think I knew that Verb help, um, had them there and I always try to get things from my local yarn stores before I order online. So um, this is The Knitter's Keep by Coco Knits. This is what it's got in it and I'll talk about it here in a minute. So this has a magnetic silicone slap bracelet, small stitch markers, 10 large stitch markers, 10 opening stitch markers, a bent tip tapestry needles, curved cable needles, and a 100% cotton bag. So let me show you this amazing, amazingness. So it comes in this little cotton bag here, and inside, is an Apple Watch size magnetic slap bracelet thingamajigger. And I just got, they only had the green color, but I was a-okay with that. So here it is. And it's got the Knitter's Keep. Go Go Knits. And you just old school style, slap that on. <laughs> and I We'll have to figure this out because I actually, I don't know if I can show you. Let me see if I can get fancy here. So on my Apple Watch is an app that is for iPhone and it also goes on to Apple Watch. And it's called uh, Knitamoose. And it's not working now because I have my phone, which I'm filming on, on airplane mode. But I'll shoot, maybe shoot some footage, make some work for myself in the post-editing. And um, show you how it works on my Apple Watch and I use it as my stitch counter. That was a long way of saying I use it as a stitch counter. <laughs> so on this arm is where I would keep this guy and all of the little notion things are in these cute envelopes. And the curved cable needles are metallic. And there's two in here in case you need to, but I've uh, found out that I really like this particular one. And you just pop it on there. Boom. And I was thinking, man, this would have been nice when I was working on the back of my pumpkin nail. <laughs> because I I tried to do it, they give you, Yuzolda has wonderful, Yuzolda Teak has wonderful instructions on her website about how to do cabling without a cable needle. I just, it, it was too finicky. It wasn't my, my thing, maybe in the future, but I enjoy using the cable needle and I'm hoping this will make it even quicker and faster. And then if you're using, um, you know, if you're doing a project where you're taking stitch markers on and off frequently. Um, this will be in handy too for your metallic stitch markers. So I am excited about this purchase. It was a, not expensive, but not inexpensive, but um, I'm glad I sprung for it and went for it. So that is one of the acquisitions. Another acquisition from this morning from Magical Joann's was some fabric. So I had purchased before about a yard 
I think this is about a yard of this amazing fabric. Can I just have wallpaper in this, please? Thank you. And I'm thinking about, you guys let me know what you think. I'm thinking about the pockets for the pumpkin ale cardi. You um, used lining. And I'm wondering, yeah? Yes? No? Let me know what you think in the comments below because I think I think that needs to happen. So when I was at Joanne's this morning, I turned a corner and I might have also actively searched for this too. I bought the rest of the fabric. <laughs> I bought what was left on the bolt, which is about three yards. <sighs> It's heaven. I seriously want wallpaper out of this. This needs to happen. I need somebody to come do it for me because I don't got time to figure that out. Gabby told me, I think on Instagram, that you can like, forget what it is, but you can put some stuff over fabric and she might have done that in her breakfast nook or something. I'm sure it's possible, but and I just totally wadded that up. I'll fold it properly. Don't don't be scared. And then I saw this fabric for my stash for future projects. And I couldn't resist either. See a theme happen in here? I love polka dots. I love pumpkins. I love this graphic. So I bought the rest of the bolt too. There was a sale. There's always a sale at Joann's. So I saved like $25. So it's all good. So I told you about this amazing acquisition. And let me show you the other stuff that Natalie sent. So one thing she sent is an acquisition for you all. So this will be for a future giveaway. Details are TBD. And it's a lovely set of buttons. Natalie, you are amazing. I love these little flower ones. They're so sweet. So these, again, she's um, Remembrance Pottery on Etsy and Facebook and Instagram. There's her deets there. There you go. And then she sent something for me which is so sweet. This is her packaging, by the way. How sweet is that? So she sent me this lovely keepsake, which I'm going to hang up on my wall or maybe my windowsill um, where I usually podcast, which is my little creative nook. Look at how amazingly sweet this is. It's a little sheepy. Thank you so much. I adore it. It's too, I would put it on a Christmas tree in a heartbeat, but this is something I wanna look at year round. So thank you so much. Another wonderful acquisition that came in the posty this week was something I ordered a while ago and it's from the amazing Sucra Sucra Miniatures. It is what I was talking about before and couldn't remember, which is called the Tiny Box of Goodness. And I got an October box and I purchased a November box too, which should be coming pretty soon. So I took a video, which I will plop up here as I talk about it. And it was gorgeous. It was, um, you, the, the presentation and the wrapping of the box was so cute. And I just felt so special when I received it. And there was this cute little paper clip bat, which I now have on my bullet journal. There, um, was some little notebooks and this cool little like pumpkin stamp and um there is this cute plush toy which i have sitting on my desk and what else there were just some cute little wonderful things there's like this crocheted cup 
um, warmer same sleeve um, with like a little ghost. There was the Sucro Sucro stitch marker, which you saw earlier. Um, and some, oh, and stickers because I'm addicted to stickers, you guys. I have a, I have a new, a, a refound obsession <laughs> with stickers. I used to have a sticker book when I was a kid. So I love stickers. And yeah, it was just so sweet. There was like this little pumpkin stamp and which I can't remember if I just mentioned or not, but it, it, it requires repeating because it's so cute but I gave a few of the things to my good friend Destiny who just um, returned back to work after about a month off and yeah I just if you have a chance to get a tiny box of goodness from Sucre Sucre Miniatures you should totally do it she she gathers together stuff from other makers and puts it all in the same box for you and it's just a, like a little present to yourself for the future from past you. It's great. Okay guys, get ready. I am in love with Mary Beth and Helen of the Crafty Toads podcast. They also have the Toads Hollow Etsy shop and they're adorable and wonderful and inspiring and you gals are amazing. And I have seen on their Instagram that they have a particular pillow which I don't know why I would be interested in it but <laughs> that I've had my eye on and they had an update and I or it might have been there actually and I was just checking out their store and I couldn't resist and it came in the postie finally <laughs> isn't it great it is a pumpkin pillow I adore it I adore it. It's so great. They sell it often on their Etsy shop. It's like envelope style here. It's great. It sits on my sofa. And yes, I did lug it up to mom's house just so I could show you guys because I adore it. Thank you so much. So they didn't stop there. They totally shocked and surprised me and they sent something else in the postie. I'm not gonna lie, I totally started to cry when I opened this up. So you guys have, uh, I talked about in the last episode, I just kind of branded the podcast and have a new logo, which my good friend Seth um, designed. And these ladies, these crafty toads indeed. Look at what they did. Oh, it's so amazing. It's a beautifully sewn pouch with my logo on it. You guys. And it's got Italia. It's like opera. That's their cute logo. And inside it's got this really cool, cute inner uh, lining. And their another logo of theirs of their shop. It's got like quilt batting, I think, guys, right? Look at the back, it's so cute. And this is really cool. This has like a pocket in the front. But I mean, come on. This was like a full circle moment for me. When you see something you've been working on and dreaming about and on fabric, I mean, amazing. <laughs> so thank you guys so much. You went above and beyond, so thank you. I mentioned earlier that lovely Marianne of Sinister Yarn sent something for the Pumpkin Cow giveaway, and she didn't stop there. She sent something for a future giveaway, which is TBD, and it's a set of these amazing minis. These are in the They're Nice Weirdos, The Muppets Collection colorways. I mean, come on. And I see a little note in here with what is what. So I'm going to go ahead and gently open it and then wrap it back up for the future winner. So BRB. Okay, I'm going to let you guys guess which is which. 
Some of them I think are pretty obvious, but we have, get it with as least amount of glare as possible. We have Little Miss Ham Hock, It's Not Easy Being Green, Hose Nose, Me Drums. Can you picture that? How adorable. Let me let me take them out because I'm not doing them justice having them in the in the wrapping. So I'm just gonna go full on and take these out for you guys. So we've got I'll I'll play the guessing game. I'll I'll do what I think they are here. Okay. So I mean obvi it's not easy being green, right? This is Hose Nose, I think, for Gonzo. I just got reminded that it's almost Christmas time and I can watch my favorite movie, which is The Muppet Christmas Carol. Super excited. Okay. Um, this is Little Miss Ham Hock. I think we all can agree on that. And let's see, me drums. I think all oh, y'all are gonna be screaming at me. I think this is animal, right? Me drums. And then this is. Can you picture that? And I can't remember what character this is. I have to look it up. I am getting a visual of a little froggy looking guy with glasses. I can't remember whose catchphrase that is. It's not Fozzy or anything. Oh my God, it's gonna drive me crazy. But can you look, see all these colors? So thank you, Marianne. And the last thing, oh my gosh, she sent something for me and I. she asked me to pick out um, colorways for the cowl and for a skein for myself. So thank you so much. And so I picked this one out for the cowl because it's keeps with the pumpkin Halloweeny theme and the fall colors. And then this one I picked for myself. This is called Phantasmagoria. You guys, it's pastel rainbow self striping yarn and it sparkles. Can you see the sparkle? Can you see the sparkle? <sighs> Go check her shop out because I don't even need to knit with this yarn to tell you do it. <laughs> it is, oh, the colors. I can't wait to, I want to cast these on like right now. But this is, um, let's see. 75% Superwash Merino, 20% Nylon, 5% Stellina. So, 100 grams, 438 yards. Amazing. Thank you so much, Marianne. Let's get the Muppet Gang back in their group here. It's the Muppet Show. I want to watch the Muppet Show now. Love the Muppets. A couple of acquisitions that I wanted to talk about, but... Um, I don't have them physically here for various reasons. One is that I bought the pattern from Satsuma Street for mini stockings. And these just were released recently. And I don't know if I'll get to them this year, but I really want to make some for my house. In our house um, growing up, we had a stocking for each person that mom, I think, had cross-stitched um, or embroidered. I think they're cross-stitched with our names on them. And she would hang them on a wall and put little cinnamon sticks in them. And I thought it would be cool to put these in my house just because. And I love Satsuma Street's aesthetic and all of her patterns. So I quickly got that pattern the other day. And the last acquisition I'll talk about, I'm not going to show until wonderful, amazing, magical, gorgeous, talented, inspiring Molly. I think that's enough titles. I don't think it's enough titles, but <laughs> Molly of a homespun house. 
Um, I ordered a while back now. I was so lucky to get in on the Tim Burton Yarn Club. <laughs> Happy dance! I'm not going to show it until she shows it on her podcast because I don't want to spoil anyone with the amazingness. But my friend Margaret also got the club and she texted me, I think it was on Monday of this week, and said, OMG, I just got the first Tim Burton Club installment. Did you get it yet? And I was like, no. She's like, it's more amazing than I could have ever thought. And she was so right. She was so right. It's perfection. It's perfection. I want to cast it on now. I want to cast on all the things. And yet I want all of the things off my needles. I'm so torn. <laughs> There's so many people I know that are... I talked about this last time too, that are feeling the same way. Like you want everything cleared off your needle so you can cast on all the other new things. I'm crazy. Anyway, that, whoop, that was my tea. <laughs> um, the yarn is speckled gorgeousness. Oh, I just gave something wrong. She's the queen of speckle. So I'm not really giving anything away, right? Anyway, it's, it's, amazing. And it also, this is a partnership with, I sound like a broken record, with the amazing Sucra Sucra Miniatures. So there was a corresponding uh, progress keeper with it. I can't wait to show you guys. Cannot wait. Tim Burton. Love it. A brief What I'm Jones in For segment. So this is a segment to say things that I have caught my eye recently and to highlight them if you haven't heard about them yet or to open up a discussion about um, the fact that you've also heard about them in the comments below or in the Ravelry group. There's always a um, thread for um, each episode so you can always plop in a convo there. But um, here are a few items that in the last few weeks I would jot down in my bullet journal or in my phone. Most most of the time in my bullet journal of things that have caught my eye. So I can't remember, I think maybe Kiltcraft Nessa or somebody that um, was talking about this designer and then she's just been popping up all over the place. Actually, it was um, seeing, they're doing a trunk show right now at A Verb for Keeping Warm. So this is Andrea Maori, who is of Drea Renee Designs, and I saw some of the knitted samples for her designs at A Verb for Keeping Warm, and I want to make everything. Her aesthetic and her designs are pretty spot on with what mine are. They're very angular, very kind of art deco-y, very architectural but very feminine, feminine, <laughs> feminine and warm and classic and oh, it's gorgeous. If you haven't seen her designs, check her out like right now on Ravelry and her website. Um, I'll have links to everything in my show notes. I just, everything, there was this cabled shawl slash scarf thing that I totally like held up and they were like, try it on. And I was like, oh. it was like, it was like a whole shawl made like the back of my, um, pumpkin ale cardigan. It was, I just, I want to cast it on tomorrow. Another thing is when I was at Verb, I saw in person the new Arbor yarn from Brooklyn Tweed. It's a Targi, I think 100% Targi um, base yarn, wool, Targi wool. <sighs> I would love to make a sweater out of this yarn. It is, the drape is amazing. It's not too rustic. Um, it is, it's amazing. And Targi is so hot right now. <laughs> There's no other way to say it. I keep seeing Targi, not necessarily Arbor of Brooklyn Tweed, um, but Sue um, has been talking about Targi. She bought like of all of these big skeins. Sue, this, I'm talking about, I'm like name dropping, but Sue is of the Legacy Knits podcast. Sue and Chelsea, wonderful Chelsea, Chelsea, um, and of the Legacy Fiber Arts podcast. Um, 
yarn shop on Etsy. Sue has a wonderful Periscope that I try to go to every morning. And she's been showing off and on their recent, Chelsea and Sue's recent podcast, um, Sue showed off these wonderful skeins of Targi wool. Um, I can't remember who the maker is. I'll plop it down here. Make it work for myself again. But um, the drape is just, uh, it's amazing. So all of the Targi things all the time. I'm, I'm, I need to get some Targi in my life. I think Eric of Sticks Plus Twine was just talking about, um, he bought a couple of skeins of Arbor recently. And they're coming in the mail and he's going to try them out. So I can't wait to see how it knits up, Eric, if you watch this, which would be amazing. You're awesome. So, um, another thing is Danny of Little Bobbins on her recent podcast. She highlighted a sock pattern that she, I believe, is working on right now, which is called Vanilla is the New Black. Um, and it's by Anna Anne Fletcher. And what's interesting about this sock is that there's a ribbed heel. And the heel just looks very intriguing. I would love to try this heel and this sock pattern. So, that is kind of in my queue and um, something I'm jonesing to do in the new year, probably. And then what I'm jonesing for, I put it in here. So all of the Christmas knitting all the time. I am trying so hard not to do nearly as many presents as last year. Because as you can see with the architecture shawl, I mean, that was for her birthday. But I'm still finishing up <laughs> stuff from last year. So... I'm going to do some hats and um, some socks for a certain mother out there. Um, but there are some wonderful cowls that are popping up. And just to name a couple of some amazing ones that I've heard of is wonderful jewels of So Sweet Violet is having a Mary Long and it's her first cow. So I so want to be a part of that. And of course, the amazing Dan and Kay of the Bakery Bears, who I do not talk about nearly as much as I should because I love them. They're one of my first podcasts. And I I'll just come out and say it. I'm a Patreon sponsor of them and proud of it. <laughs> so um, I adore them and they're having a Bakery Bears handmade Christmas along. Um, so you should you should check those couple out and there's plenty more where that came from. So on to the next segment. Backstage Knitting. So Backstage Knitting is a place where I show footage from the last couple of weeks, or in this case, a few weeks. Um, I talk about things that have happened. Um, I used to say if I didn't have footage or anything, it was called recitative. I go back and forth, but it's basically Backstage Knitting is what it's become. Um, and it's uh, some of it's yarny related, crafty related. Uh, most of it has to do with my work either at the theater as a fundraiser or um, as a singer and also in my personal life. So um, the things I wanted to share with you all and feel free to skip this bit if you wish. Um, I'm trying to be better about putting timestamps in there, but Anyway, if you want, if you subscribe to this, you're probably into the backstage knitting bit. <laughs> so in the last couple of weeks, I sang in a concert series, um, which took up all amazingly all of my time. I knit on my Halloween socks and that was about it. I didn't even touch my pumpkin ale cardi, which is why I only got as far as the one panel. But um, we sang the symphony chorus. I'm part of the San Francisco Symphony Chorus, and we sang with the symphony the music um, live to the showing of uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey. And leading up to it, the music was kind of like weird. I mean, it sounded cool, but to sing it was kind of like, uh, we called it zombie music let me oh i'm on my phone recording but i wish i could show you it was basically going uh, like it was crazy um but it sounds super spooky when with the movie um because the chorus sings um the full chorus sings when the monolith 
it is shown the big black pillar thing in the movie and so it's super spooky and crazy and then um the f ladies the females the ladies sing um during when they're like going to the monolith or there were some other sections like when they're talking about space and they're getting ready to go to the monolith so i wasn't always sure when that bit was happening because obviously i was singing and had my face in music <laughs> so it was a fantastic experience it was a bonding i love doing shows like this where it's um with the symphony it's not a traditional um kind of classical concert and it's not something that we have done a bajillion times or i have done a bajillion times like handel's messiah which is coming up and um and it was also really interesting because the crowd was a lot of new a lot of new folks to the symphony a lot what we were hearing it was the first time that a lot of folks had been to the symphony it was a lot of tech bros a lot of tech ladies um which was to be expected and awesome and it was there was one audience member in particular that was on the first night and it was the weirdest thing weirdest audience member that I think I've ever seen in my whole time performing, which is going on 15 or 20 years. That's crazy. Is that for real? If I count back that far, yeah. Anyway, definitely as a professional, it's the weirdest thing. And I'll pop up a picture here. It was this dude dressed like a wolf or a saber tooth tight not lion or something full on dressed like it I have video of it too and it was so hilarious and weird some people were kind of scared they were like oh my gosh is he gonna like start shooting people or something I was like I hope security would have checked the dude in a full wolf suit before they let him into a crowd full of thousands of people but um no, they were, it was just, he was just a dude in a wolf suit. And what was funny is that he was sitting, or she, I don't know if it was a girl or a boy, um, was sitting behind the lead actor from the movie who was there the first night to talk about the film. The guy who plays Dave, I think that's his name, his character's name. So it was surreal. But the experience, the music gave us chills. Like when you hear the da, 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 ba, da, and the, um, organ is played during that bit so you can feel the ground rumbling with that particular organ piece because before any of the trumpets come in it's just and you just like oh. it's it was crazy so enough about that but it was it was a fantastic musical experience it turned out to be even though it was zombie music it was great um it is raining here which I kind of talked about I don't know why I put that in my show notes I think it was the first time it had rained when I did my show notes I had hoped to um film last weekend and it didn't work out which I will tell you about shortly but um it is raining and everybody freaks out when it rains here partly because we've been in a drought and people aren't used to it and also we're not used to it in general. It doesn't rain a ton in the Bay Area. Um, not generally. Um, and, you know, our systems haven't had a ton of rain, so they get clogged up really easily. But I love the rain. I love full seasons. I actually really miss living partly in the Midwest. But really, I miss living in New York and on the East Coast. I'm a California girl. I'm happy where I'm at. I'm flourishing, but this time of year especially, oh, I miss New York. I miss New York big time. Big time. And Jacqueline of the Brooklyn Knit Folk podcast, your intros, they make me heart sick. I'm not going to lie. I miss taking the subway every day. I love it. I love New York. I got to get back there. It's been too long. I think a trip needs to be planned. Whole 30. 
So Whole30 is a detox program. That did, I don't like that. Let me look up what it says. I feel like I need to represent Whole30 here. Oh. I wonder how long that black dot has been on my eye. So Whole30, oh, that is a fail, but there you can kind of see it. So Whole30 is a 30 day reboot of your system. It's a way to eat and get your body off of using sugar and processed foods as a way of um, using those foods as energy um, and getting back to natural fats and the way your body is actually supposed to run. And it's a way of eating that is highly recommended for folks who have a lot of allergies, who it's not long-term, it's 30 day, hence Whole30. Um, and for those folks who have autoimmune issues, um, for folks who have um, insulin resistance, etc. I did Whole30 uh, for the first time two years ago, and I did like a Whole15, 15, 15 days of it, um, probably about a half a year after that. And then after that, I uh, tried to do Weight Watchers and kind of combine paleo. Um, Whole30 is basically super strict paleo. I've stopped doing Weight Watchers for a variety of reasons. Um, I might go back to it someday, but right now I it just was not working for me. So I was doing the coaching, which was amazing, and I'm so grateful for the Weight Watcher coaching, and it's and it set me on the right track and helped me figure out things that I want to continue working on with my relationship with food and with my body and my body image, um, which I've talked about before. Um, but I was like, I remember what I felt like after doing the first Whole30 and I want to get back to that place and I want to work towards um, feeling that way long term. Um, because I felt like it was a place that not only physically I felt good, I felt emotionally really good. I felt like um, a, a connectedness and um, a positivity that I haven't, I don't always feel with my body. Um, and many people don't, um, which is horrible, but it's true. So I started last Saturday. Basically, you, you cut out dairy legumes, grains, um, a lot of stuff, sugar, of course, refined sugar, everything. Um, it's a very strict paleo diet. Paleo diet, you can have honey, um, you can have all kinds of stuff, but, and also in paleo, you know, you can have paleo muffins and paleo pumpkin lattes and paleo blah, blah, blah. But Whole30 is twofold. It's a physical reboot to get all the impure things out of your body. And then it's also a psychological thing to keep, um, to get yourself away from relying on those pumpkin lattes for, for me, not everybody, I'm not speaking for everybody, but for me, it was like a little treat myself to get me, you know, to get to work or to get through a stressful day when... I should be relying on a cup full of sugar to get me through a day. Like, that's cray cray. So, I'm doing this reboot. I feel so much better already. I'm also cooking more. I'm more in touch with my food. I'm also more in touch with um, um, making sure that I'm not wasting food. Because frankly, when you're on the go, 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 you're, you kind of go, oh, I'll just let those green onions go. But when you know you don't have a lot of other options and you don't want, you actually don't want those other options. It's hard to describe. Um, you figure out how to make those green onions into something. <laughs> so I think the suburban stitcher, I believe is her podcast name. She, Diane, I believe if I'm wrong, I'm sorry if I'm wrong, but I'll put it all down here. But she's been doing a whole 30 or finished it recently. 
beautiful, wonderful CC of the Geeky Girls Knit podcast, who I talk about often, um, has been doing Whole30 on and off, and it's been wonderful for her health, if I may say so. I believe you talk about it, CC. Um, and actually seeing Cece go through it again and seeing her results really inspired me to kind of just go, you know, you're, you're banging your head up against the wall and trying to do something that isn't working for you. And you need to kind of go back to something that really did and figure out how to keep that going, going forward. So, um, Last weekend I didn't podcast because I went to the grocery store and, and I meal planned and meal prepped and cleaned out my kitchen and resorted my kitchen and it took me about the whole weekend to do that. So I could have sat down for an hour and filmed and talked to y'all but it takes it takes a long time to edit and you know to make sure things are uploading right and everything and especially the way I edit I'm like I love editing, so I, I spend a good I spend a good deal, a, a good maybe three or four hours, sometimes editing. So, yeah. But I brought up all my food to my mom's house so I can keep on plan and make sure I'm not wasting any food. And I'll keep y'all updated. I'm using RealPlans.com, which I'll link in the show notes if you're interested and um which is a meal planning site it's great because it's fluid and flexible you can swap out recipes you can move them to different days this coming week um it will be a test because i have a couple of nights of rehearsals and then all day saturday i have performances i'm performing in the dia de los muertos um concert which is an annual event with the symphony i did it three years ago. I'll pop up some pictures from then and I'll take lots of footage um, on next Saturday. But the ladies are singing um, with an, I think it's an all lady mariachi band, which I'm so excited about. I mean, how awesome is that? So it's a uh, day of the dead. It's to celebrate the wonderful, amazing Hispanic community in San Francisco and it's great because it really is a family event all of the families come and celebrate the day of the dead and it's it's fantastic so um yeah but I'll be having to pack all of my food for that day um I could you know there's ways to eat out and and kind of figure out around that but frankly I'm really trying to break myself of that habit. I'm taking action, people. Why don't you join me on this journey, on this non-nitty journey? Okay. That's going to do it for episode 14. We made it through. Thank you so much for spending this time with me. I hope you all have a lovely weekend and happy Halloween to everyone who celebrates Halloween. And I hope you will share. Maybe I'll open up doing the spur of the moment, people. I would love if you want to um, open up a thread in the Ravelry group, either I or if you, if somebody beats me to it, feel free to do it to share all of your Halloween costumes. I think that would be so fun to see because not everybody's on Instagram, so it would be awesome. And um, keep working on those pumpkin um, projects and I hope you guys have a great next couple of weeks as well and I will talk to you all soon. I'll be on Instagram often and also in Periscope. I'll probably Periscope on Saturday which is when I hope, knock on wood, this episode goes live. So thank you guys. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed and hit the old thumbs up if you liked this episode and I will talk to you soon. Bye!